Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor, and today we're going to be painting this fun little skinny pumpkin. It's a different pumpkin shape than what you normally see me paint on here, but I thought it was fun because it's kind of like tall and awkward looking, and I thought it would make a really fun shape. So we're just going to start by adding some DecoArt Americana paint. This is the Canyon Orange color, which is actually like my favorite orange to use on pumpkins. And so this is a matte acrylic paint. So we're gonna be um, giving this a coat of the Canyon Orange, and then we'll add some more details. I'm thinking maybe we could add some really cute, like a little spider or maybe a little spider web to this pumpkin. What do you guys think? Think that would be a good idea? Let me know what you think in the comments. So we're just gonna give this a nice coat of Canyon Orange, and I'm just using some of DecoArt's brushes. This is a flat tip brush, size three quarters of an inch. It's a really nice base coating brush. It holds lots of paint and I can cover a large area fairly quickly. Don't worry about painting that stem just yet. We'll paint it brown and we might even add some little leaves up there. So just give it one good coat of orange and then take your brush and just kind of go across the entire thing to smooth out those brush strokes. Okay, one more coat of the Canyon Orange. I love this DecoArt Americana paint because it's a matte acrylic paint um, and it's a higher quality paint than some craft paints that you may purchase other places. Um, and I like that I can buy it directly on the DecoArt website, making it super convenient because they ship it directly to me. And so um, I don't live near like a Hobby Lobby or a Michaels or anywhere. All we have around here is a Walmart and our Walmart does not carry uh, the DecoArt paints. I know some of them do, but ours does not. And so I like to shop directly on the website because I can get it faster than if I were to try to like go to the next town over and shop there. All right, I'm gonna hit this with a hairdryer again and then we're gonna paint the stem a brown. Let's see, what brown do I wanna use? What's this one? This is dark chocolate, we'll use that. So this is dark chocolate, it's a Americana paint a nice brown shade and I may switch to a smaller brush this one's a flat tip size 12 that looks dry enough and then we're just gonna hit the little stem and I'm actually going to bring the stem a little further down into the pumpkin um, instead of just having it sit on top of the pumpkin now this door hanger or the, this is not a door hanger but this wooden cutout is um, not one with the lines laser etched on it. And so the great thing about that is it allows me to kind of just creatively add whatever I want. And so um, you can get these in our shop at shopdoorhangers.com if you want to paint your own pumpkin shape. So see, I'm bringing it down into the pumpkin just a little bit. Make that shape kind of go out just a little on the edge. That way it's not just a stiff rectangle. Let's dry it and we'll do one more coat. Let me know if you guys are enjoying this. I love to teach you guys how to paint. And um, we do so in my membership, the Painters Clubhouse. So if you want more information about that, be sure and click the link over in my profile. There we go. One more coat. I feel like there's one little spot that didn't get dry and so it pushed the paint out of the way. For those of you who don't know, when you're painting with these craft acrylics, if you're doing more than one coat, it helps if you let it dry first or dry it like this with a hairdryer or something and then wait till it's dry before you do a second coat because otherwise it just pushes the paint out of the way. Um, you love watching all my videos. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I do try to teach and give value and always help you guys kind of figure it out because I know a lot of you guys don't know how to paint. And so anytime I can help you with that, um, it just makes me happy. I love seeing you guys have success with painting. Okay, let's choose a green and we'll do some little leaves. I'm gonna try this. This is a one of my favorite greens. It's Hauser Medium Green. So DecoArt has three colors that have the name Hauser in them. There's Hauser Light Green, Medium, and Dark. And this is the medium shade. So I'm gonna use this to do some little leaves on our pumpkin. And I'm just gonna freehand these on. Um, with a round tip brush. So this is one of the round tip brushes from DecoArt. It's a size five. 
And we're just gonna, let's see, let's add like a little leaf over here. Just kind of a little, little teardrop sort of shape. Actually, instead of teardrop, let's change that and kind of make it wave out on the edges a little bit. We'll get creative with our leaf. And so instead of a teardrop, it's almost like a, a figure eight sort of shape that kind of goes out and comes to a point. Let's do another one kind of going down this way. So you do two little wiggly lines and then make it come to a point. And then on the other side, two little wiggly lines and come to a point. Thank you, sweetie. My daughter Charlie's bringing me little notes. She put mom into a picture of me. <laughs> okay, we're gonna draw this and do another coat on these little leaves. Um, do you use straight paint or add a little water? So sometimes I add a little water, but most of the time I don't. Usually the only time I'm adding water is if the paint feels excessively thick or if I'm doing hand lettering. Sometimes I will water it down just a little so that it will um, glide just a little better. But most of the time I do not water it down. But I do generally like to start with a damp brush. That's, that seems to help the paint flow a little bit. Okay, I'm just putting a quick second coat on these leaves. There we go. So there's our leaves on our little pumpkin and we'll add some details to them. Let's use a little bit of the Hauser dark green. So here's the difference between the medium and the dark. It's quite a lot dark. I'm just gonna get just a teensy bit of this out of the lid and do a little bit of a shade or a shadow on the bottom side of these little leaves. Just while that paint is still wet, I'm just putting a little bit on the edge of that leaf to kind of give it a little bit of, a little bit more de depth. And put a little bit down the center too, kind of like a, the center of that leaf. All right, I like that better. Let me show you. So here's what we did. Looks a lot better. Okay, now let's add some, let's see. I think I wanna take a like a, uh, the brown of our stem color and get a little bit on my round tip brush here since my brush is damp. What you need, babe? After you're done with this video, I need Okay, it'll be just a minute, okay? Um, after you're done with that, um, so it got me distracted, my son came in here. Get your round tip brush and a little bit of that dark chocolate. And I'm just gonna kind of create like a little bit of lines that kind of define the shape of our pumpkin a little bit with the brown. Just kind of go around the edges here, add a little bit, and then I might also kind of do one kind of coming down like this towards the middle. So that kind of gives our pumpkin just, just a little bit of shape. Thank you, you love it. Oh, watching from Ireland, you're far away. Do you like to paint? Okay, so now that we have that, I'm thinking I kind of want to add like a little spider web or something. So I'm going to get a skinnier round tip brush. This one's more like a liner brush and it's a size three slash zero. Um, and we're going to get some black paint. And I am going to water this down a little bit because for a, um, for a spider web, I want the, the parts of the web to be nice and thin and so it's easier to get thinner lines with uh by watering your paint down just a little bit oh and i didn't bring a paper towel in here hang on i bet i got one in the trash let me grab a paper towel because i used the end of my brush to stir that up all right and with our little liner brush we're just gonna get the excess off our brush don't get a whole lot on your brush just halfway coating the bristles because you don't want to get that paint up here in the ferrule of your brush so for our spider web, we're just gonna start by doing some straight lines, all going out different directions, but coming down to the same point. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So I'm doing four lines. See, they all go out kind of in a radial shape, but they all come back down to the same point. Next, you're gonna take your round tip brush and starting at the outermost tip, do a little sweeping motion from one part of the line or from one line to the next. 
and then continue it on and off off the pump off the edge of the pumpkin see that so now we're going to do the same thing but we're going to come in a little bit so just come in about half an inch or so and continue that same pattern and then again come in some more and just continue it on around until you get to the center of your spider web so there's our spider web super easy <laughs> she, Chrissy says, you make it look so easy. I've been painting for almost seven years now, so I have lots of practice, but I will say it didn't take me long to get confident and comfortable with painting. So um, I was not born a painter. This is not something I've always been good at. It's something that I've learned and it's a skill that you can learn too. Anybody can learn how to do this. Um, and if you're a little scared to get started, maybe you just need a teacher. So I can help you out. All right, I think I wanna add a purple spider because why, well, like adding a black spider on top of a black spider web doesn't have enough color in it for me. If you can tell by the wall behind me and my shirt, I love color. So I feel like it needs some color. So I'm gonna choose, um, this purple looks fun. It's nice and bright. What else do I have? Um, I think this one will do. This one is dioxazine purple. It's a really bright, or not bright, but like a deep purple. And we don't need a whole lot of it, just a little. And you're gonna get like, let's see. I'm gonna get a filbert tip brush. Filbert tip brushes are kind of curved on the end, like the end of a fingertip is curved. That's what a filbert tip brush is. And so this is the size number eight. It's also a, a deco art paint brush. I'm gonna get some of that purple paint on here and we're just gonna make a little, um, ooh, I know, instead of putting our spider web, our spider on the web, what if we made our spider look like it's dropping down from behind the leaves on the pumpkin? So let's just make our spider right here in the center. We're just gonna draw a circle and then fill it in. Spiders are easy. Draw a circle and fill it in. And then we're gonna dry it. Won't take just a second. There we go. And let's do another coat on there. Two coats should be enough. It's looking dark enough with two coats. Okay, now that we have that, we're switching back to, all we have is a little, a little like oval, if you will. And we're switching back to a liner brush. And we're just gonna pick up a little bit of that purple. And now we're gonna make four legs going out and down on each side of the spider. So I'm gonna kind of start up on the spider's back and do the first one there. So that gives me room for the other four legs. And then do another. And another. Make that one a little bit darker. And let's see, I need one more. So we'll put one more right here. Okay, so there's my little spider. He looks, it almost looks black in this light, but it is very purple. Um, actually, it's, it's darkening so much that on the orange background, it's looking a little darker than what I wanted. So I may have to add a little bit of a light purple to brighten it up. Let's try this purple pizzazz. It's really bright. I didn't think about because I'm painting it on an orange background, the purple actually does look black once it dries. It looked nice and bright and purple until it dried. So I'm gonna put some of this purple pizzazz on top of my spider's body. We'll keep his legs the same color, but on the body, we're gonna add a little bit of this purple pizzazz. I'm gonna dry it, it may take two coats. There we go. So now do your second coat of the purple pizzazz on the center of the spider. There we go, just like that, it's brightened up. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my liner brush again, and this time using a little bit of that black that we watered down, I'm gonna start up here behind the leaf and kind of make a really thin line down to my spider, like the spider's hanging, hanging from that, that line of web. And then we're gonna make some eyes on our spider also. We're gonna dry this, and then we're gonna make some eyes with white. Is it easier to paint with a wet or a dry brush? I feel like a wet brush is a little easier. It helps the paint flow better. Okay, now that that's nice and dry, I'm gonna go back to the liner brush 
and I'm just going to use it with some white paint to draw some little eyes on the center. Let's see, do I want them on the center or the bottom? I think I want them on the bottom of my spider. So I'm just drawing two circles of white and filling them in. There we are. <laughs> Look how cute. Now we gotta draw that and add some little black dots in the center of those eyes and um, it'll look more spiderish. <laughs> this is such a fun one to create. Like, if this were you painting this pumpkin, I wanna know like, what would you have done on the pumpkin? Would you have done a jack-o'-lantern face? Because with a pumpkin like this that doesn't have anything on it, you could the, the possibilities are endless. Like you could paint it any way you like. So if you're a creepy Halloween kind of person, you could paint it creepy. If you're a cutesy Halloween person, you could paint it cutesy. I'm gonna do some big eyes in the center of this, this the whites of this little spider. Just so this spider doesn't look creepy, he looks cute. Okay, so there's the eyes. <laughs> look how precious. I feel like it does need one more white dot like in the center of the black to really make it look kind of like cartoonish. Um, so this pumpkin you can purchase in our shop. I think it's called the, the tall pumpkin or the skinny pumpkin, tall or skinny pumpkin. Just search the word pumpkin at shopdoorhangers.com and you'll find it there. Um, it is a, uh, offered as a blank. Blank is what we call it when you're buying uh, the wooden piece. Now, if you have a laser cutting machine or something like that, um, or you're good at using a jigsaw or a scroll saw, you can, um, get the wooden the templates from us and use those on your projects to, to be able to cut out the same shapes that we're using even if you can't can't draw a stick figure so if you can't draw you can still paint all right i'm just using my white here to add just a little bit of personality to the different elements of the pumpkin with my liner brush Let's make this spider web sparkle just a little bit. Maybe put like a little bit of white highlights on parts of it to make it look like it's like glistening in the light. Do a little bit on the edge of the pumpkin here. See how that really made the different elements of the pumpkin kind of come alive. One more thing I wanna add and then we're done is a little bit of black. And I'm just gonna go up here and I'm gonna add a little bit to our stem and maybe a little to my leaves to kind of give them a little bit of definition. And I'm just kind of tracing the outer edge of them to provide a little bit of shape. See how the black and the white accents really help the leaves to pop. Look at that cute little spider, you guys. <laughs> Isn't he adorable? All right, if you enjoyed this and you wanna paint your own, grab, go grab a little pumpkin out of the shop at shopdoorhangers.com or cut your own if you like. But especially make sure you pick up some Deco Art Americana paints. You can grab them on their website and they also have all their stencils right now are 70% off. So if you want to, you know, learn how to stencil paint, that's even easier than like this right here. So go grab some stencils. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.